Hi there, Trace. This is Brad Gilbert with the FX Market Insight for Thursday, the 21st of May. All right, now just coming into the uh, European session a little bit later today for the uh, FX Market Insight. Just had some uh, PMI data come through and it's, it's pretty good, okay, for uh, Europe and also the UK. Not, uh, you know, positive numbers, which is, you know, as much as there's bad news about the coronavirus in, uh, in the UK, the economy is still sort of ticking away. So just bear this in mind as we go forward. It's like there's so much crap news out there. It's hard to work out, you know, what's wrong and what's not and everything else. I think the media has got a lot to answer for for a lot of what's going on. But um, anyway, what can we do? Now, look at the major currency pairs. Very uniform. The dollar pair is going up. The uh, other pair is going down. That's a really good uh, setup. But... Once I bring you back across and just seeing where those US equities finish, minus 1.5%, the Asian equities didn't really agree with that. And uh, we'll see how the uh, European equities go as they open up. Now, just have a look, right? So actually, before I change pages, the dollar index just slowly drifting. I mean, it's all over the place, but still, you'd have to say a downward sort of uh, presence is still on the cards. But you come across to the major pairs, right? And it's you know what, there's not a hell of a lot going on. Like, I think where they are now, we're waiting for um, the next major level. You see a little stop loss run here in Kiwi. Uh, dollar yen not doing much. And Euro, I tell you what, it doesn't look like it's done with the top side yet. Um, whereas Sterling is like anyone's guess. It's just wrapping around these trend lines and just sort of banging away. The downside move is still in, on play in dollar cat, although, you know, the price movement is somewhat lacklustre. So what have we got? Well, you know what? We had that uh, move on the Monday. The, the currencies are still sitting up here. It's like they don't know what to do, where to go to next. And so what we have to do is actually sort of wait for the, where the next sort of major momentum is going to come from. Unfortunately for us, and I'll sw switch over to the uh, news page, it's all the same old crap. And, you know, we're waiting for headlines, okay? It's either going to come from Trump uh, or something like that because that's where the main movers have been coming from. Um, and uh, so you got Eurozone contraction eased in May. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So there's, 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 at least the media outlets are focus, focusing on a bit of the uh, economic data, but the rest of it is a little bit rubbish and that's why the currencies aren't moving. Everyone sort of saw that random move on the Monday now we're sort of sitting back going, okay, well, that's great. That's done. What do we do now? So it's a very sort of tricky, precarious situation we're in. Uh, there's been no change. If I come back, back to the Forex Daily Market Insight, no change in the active pairs. The active pairs still Euro and Dollar CAD. Euro still looks like it wants to go up. And uh, Dollar CAD looks like it wants to, well, not necessarily go down, but it's just, it's still down there. So I'm waiting for, for clearer momentum for a trading opportunity. And the watch list pairs are pretty much the same as they were the day before. So all you can do at this point, you can't make the markets move, right? You gotta wait for them to move. and We're gonna wait for the data. And this is the, the unfortunate situation with regards um, geopolitical events is we're in, in limbo. Unlike the economic numbers, right? Which do have a clear opening and uh, or release time, right? What we're waiting for is, is some numbers to, uh, we're waiting for random news releases, sorry, about the coronavirus to get us into things. Keep an eye on the initial jobless claims, right? Coming out today in uh, the North American session, that's probably the key piece of data that, uh, that we can tangibly track, right? With regards um, what's happening in the state. So, just keep an eye as we go through the day because that, that sort of data is, uh, it's, it's, you know, it gives us an update of who's going back to work and who's not, et cetera, et cetera. The number is half of what it was last week. or I think it was, it was about five, five and a half. So there's uh, a lot less pressure on the financial system as far as employments go. Uh, the continuous claims, obviously 24 million, uh, not everyone's back at work, but this could change very quickly over the next week, right? But there's two things that could happen. Employment in the US picks up dramatically and or the virus infections get increased because of all the rollback of the lockdowns. Now, there's no increase in viruses and then I think the dollar sort of just keeps going down, the US dollar. Um, 
and there'd be an increase in demand. You should see oil go up. You see a whole range of things happening. But the, uh, it'd be interesting to see the jobless, the weekly jobless claims number. This number here is generally like no one used to care about it. But now it's the only tangible thing that does a week to week sort of basis. And that should give us some sort of um, idea of how things are going. I would be, uh, what, so what do I do on that? So when the jobless claims numbers come out, you need to keep an eye on the US equity markets. This is where the answer will come from, right? Whether there's increase or decrease, sometimes it's a bit difficult to see what the impact on the dollar is because it's, is it weak data or strong data gives the dollar a, a bit of presence, right? A bit of momentum. But then you have to sort of wind it back to the US dollar safe haven situation and that, that could be different. So, you know what? As you say it, it's like, well, this is a little bit tricky. Okay, you look at the charts, they are in, inconclusive at this stage. So to me, it's a, this is a bit of a holding pattern. Like Kiwi still wants to go up, Euro wants to go up, Sterling doesn't. Um, Aussie's sort of a bit sideways as well. Dollar CAD's sort of gone sideways and so is uh, Euro. So to me, it's a little bit lackluster and I'm not confident with the momentum and the, the sideways price, price mover in the currencies is not encouraging for a clear and dominating trade where you can put serious capital into it. So just re relax, be patient, wait for the opportunity. It can come up at any stage, obviously, with some random news. Um, and that's all you can do. Okay, you can't make these things move. All right, guys, have a good day. Cheerio.